Hello there, my name is Michael Elder and I work with the Division of Academic Innovation and Gifted Services here for Onslow County Schools. Um, and as we prepare for our magnet school lottery process, we are aware that not every parent or interested person can attend the lottery itself. Uh, so we hope that by posting this flipped version of the presentation uh, that as many folks who want access to it can have that. So um, the this presentation will be shared live on March 8th uh, at 4 p.m. in the Jacksonville High School cafeteria, as well as the entire lottery process will occur on that day and at that time. Uh, so we're going to walk through that same process here, and uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Again, my name is Michael Elder, my colleague Michelle Chadwick, or uh, Pam Brewer. Any of the three of us can certainly help you through any of your magnet school questions. We coordinate the, the process of selection uh, for the schools um, in a random way. And then uh, the schools kind of pick up after this process and um, will take care of enrolling students and those kind of things. So let's walk through the presentation here. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. So the order of this presentation, both this online version as well as the one that we'll do face to face, um, we'll look at the timeline. We'll talk about how the magnet process works for our middle school as well as our two elementary schools, and then how you can find out where you are in the priority list. Uh, it's important to us to maintain our students' confidentiality and their privacy, of course, and so uh, when we post, li post lists, whether it be on our website or whether it be uh, the list that is posted at Jacksonville High School following the lottery itself, um, we use students' first initial, last initial, and then their six-digit birthday. If a student happens to have a hyphenated last name, then typically we'll use both of those as well. So you may see some that have three, three initials in there. Uh, so you can see here if this happens to be Jane Smith, born on August 21st, 2007, her code would be JS082107. Um, the process in terms of timeline goes like this. Uh, we hold the lottery on March 8th. Uh, immediately following the lottery, we'll post the lists uh, on the windows between the gymnasium and the auditorium at Jacksonville High School. Um, we work as quickly as we can to get the lists uh, finalized and posted on our website. Um, then uh, the week of March 14th, we will mail out letters to all applicants, whether uh, the applicant is selected or if they're on the wait list. Um, all applicants get a letter at that time. Students and families have about a month. Um, we do have to receive contracts back by April 15th in order to uh, accept the student. So uh, if you, for some reason, would not receive a letter, you need to please contact us. Again, we mail them to all the addresses provided to us through the application process. Um, if students happen to turn down slots or if more slots become available, then we come back and we work through the waiting list process and the dates listed there on your screen. Um, at any time, again, you see the phone number there on the screen. It's a uh, 455-2211. Uh, Pam Brewer primarily handles uh, con or facilitating conversation about where folks are on the waiting list. Um, please feel free to contact her at any time. You can certainly contact me um, as well. Um, and we certainly expect that and, and enjoy those conversations. So as we prepare for the lottery itself, uh, we always look at well, what are the number of applications and how many openings? So this slide is, is a little bit tricky to read. You can see that we have 415 applications received for Newbridge Middle School. Some of those applications are for siblings of current students, and siblings of current students um, are automatically admitted as long as that student is still a student at the school. Of course, we don't want to break up families. Um, so you will see here that we, of those 415 applications, about 305 were for sixth grade. Uh, that's usually our highest number, and again, this year it is. Um, we anticipate about 80 initial acceptance letters going out for sixth grade. Um, that number, it, we try to stay conservative because, of course, we can add two numbers. We don't want, we can't ever pull back, and we don't ever pull back a contract once we send it out. Um, so pretty typically we'll go to the waiting list for sixth grade, but we start with about 80 acceptances. So uh, you can see it's a, you know about a one in four, between a one in three and a one in four chance of being accepted for, for the sixth grade. There are a couple openings at seventh and eighth grade. Initially, we typically do not send out any acceptances. 
because sometimes a sixth grader who is admitted will come with a seventh or an eighth grade sibling. So we always have to be careful that we don't overfill our upper grades. Um, the reason we don't see many spaces available is because uh, once students are accepted in as sixth graders, they typically tend to stay at the school. And so those, those grade levels are full. We try to have about 175 kids per grade level at Newbridge once the process is complete. Um, so you may ask the question, well, who are the rest of the kids that are in sixth grade if there are 175 kids at Newbridge? And that's a great question. Uh, those are kids that live in the area immediately surrounding the school. So um, part of the school is uh, from students who live right around Newbridge or in the case of Clyde Irwin, right around Clyde Irwin, or in the case of Northwoods, right around Northwoods. Um, and those kids are districted to that school, just like all of us are districted to schools around our, our home residential area. So, uh, so we will, like I say, most likely send out about 80 acceptances and then everyone else will receive a wait list letter. Um, and then we also post on the website the, the waiting list so you can see how far down on that waiting list you are. A difficult question that always comes up is, well, how far down do we end up going on the waiting list? Some years it's 20, some years it's 50, some years it's 10. So it really depends on the number of returning students, the number of students coming from that home district, um, and those numbers are things that um, we have to watch as we get closer and closer to the school year. So we continue to go back to that waiting list up until about a month before school starts. In rare instances, we may even go a little closer than that. Um, so again, contact us if you want to know um, any more information about where you happen to be on the waiting list. Again, that'll also be posted on our website, and we'll share that here in just a few minutes. So we would go over the guidelines and the procedures. If you're applying to the school, what we simply say is be sure you're aware that school, all three of our magnet schools uh, have relatively strict dress codes. And so if, uh, if you need to be ready and willing to meet those dress code expectations, the behavior expectations are there, but they're no different than the, the remainder of our schools. Um, and so we just always like to make sure that folks know that once I sign a contract for the magnet school, that's my home school and it remains my home school for the remainder of the year. Transportation for some folks, uh, you may choose certainly to drop your child off at any of the three magnet schools, um, but we do provide hub transportation, um, not door to door transportation, but hub transportation to the magnet schools. Um, in essence, what this means is we have hub sites at these various sites um, from Dixon Middle down there through uh, Hunters Creek and Clyde Irwin. So all those sites, there is a, a hub currently at that school. So the bus sits at that hub for about 20 or 30 minutes in the morning. Students can arrive at the beginning of that window and get on the bus and the bus driver's there to, to monitor that. Um, or they can come just right when the bus is gonna leave in the morning and the same happens in the afternoon. Somebody does have to be there. There has to be in the afternoon, especially, to make sure that child can get home. So um, you work those things out um, as uh, once you figure out exactly where the hub is and how close that is to your home and with the bus driver. Um, they do not leave students at the hub site. Um, so you need to make sure you can meet those transportation guidelines from the hub sites as well. As I mentioned just a minute ago, once a contract is signed with any of our magnet schools, that becomes the home school. Students are not permitted to transfer back to their original home school. However, at the end of each school year, we do ask folks if they're interested in continuing at the magnet school or they can all, you always have the option at the end of the school year to go back to your, to your home school. So what does the magnet school process look like? Um, we certainly joke around that it, uh, maybe there's ping pong balls or pulling names out of a hat. Um, in order, of course, to make this as, as fair as possible, um, we use Microsoft Excel. We'll walk through that process here in a moment. Um, and that process ensures that everybody has an equal, uh, an equal chance of being selected. Um, so, like I said, we'll look at that here in just a minute. Following the, the actual lottery, we'll post those results. They will remain posted, or the plan is that they remain posted uh, through the, through this the week of uh, March 8th um, at Jacksonville High School, and they'll be posted between the gymnasium and the auditorium. Um, so if you can't make it to the lottery itself and you just want to drive by, you can certainly do that uh, at any time 
we do ask that you respect uh, the fact that it is a high school with kids coming and going from it. So um, the time that you go would be appreciated if you can do that after school hours. Um, so at this point, if we were face to face, we would be doing the lottery itself. Um, there's not a whole lot different. So I'm going to walk through for the other two magnet schools and then we'll show you the um, we'll show you the actual uh, lottery process in Excel. Um, so if if we're looking at Northwoods Elementary Magnet School, you can see we have um, the number of applicants and the number of openings. Uh, so K through five there, we had about 226 applications received for Northwoods Elementary. And it looks like right now, again, conservatively, we have about 20 openings in kindergarten, about 10 in first grade, and then a couple in fourth and fifth grade. Um, so that would be what we'll be looking to fill through the lottery. Same processes here in terms of hub transportation, um, in terms of making it your home school. And then Clyde Irwin is a little unique. Um, Clyde Irwin has two magnet school pro programs running within the same school. So first, uh, we look to fill uh, our uh, splash openings, which is our Spanish language immersion program at Clyde Irwin. Uh, and so you'll see there uh, we have uh, about 29 applicants and we have about 25 positions in kindergarten splash it's certainly a, a specialized program and it's it's one that certain people really enjoy so um, we will we will look to fill those spots as best we can um, there are some applicants for second and third grade we put on the presentation it depends on readiness um, a student entering second or third grade splash is almost always someone who's coming to Onslow County from a different county who has already been in a language immersion program or perhaps lived overseas uh, and, and learned a lot of the language there. So we can certainly work through those if that's one of, if that's your interest, we can talk about that um, more, more directly when we're together. Uh, in terms of the traditional openings right now, not a whole lot, a couple in second, fourth and fifth grade at Clyde Irwin. Uh, most of the openings right now are in the splash program. Um, typically, once we get to the waiting list, we'll have some uh, start to fill into the traditional slots as well. So again, same process, dress code, transportation, the hub sites becoming the home school. And at this point, like I say, we would do these individually if we were all together. So let me pull up what the lottery process kind of looks like. So this is what you would see if we were all together. Um, and so I'll walk you through uh, walk you through what this looks like. These are just some made up personal codes over here. So if we look at these codes, you will notice there's that first initial, last initial. So this would be somebody named Aaron Jones, who was born on April 30th, 2005, for example. Um, so what you would see if we were all together um, is I would certainly look at my notes over here and we will plug in the random the random number generator. Um, and so we say this is going to equal a random number between, oops, let me spell it right, one and we make it 10,000 just to make sure there's plenty of values there. Um, once I hit return, you're gonna see a value pop up and then that one will change when I drag it across. So we'll give everyone in that list a value. At this point, I'm gonna turn off our calculations and that way the number doesn't change. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it over here. And this, all that this is doing is you'll notice the numbers are the same, but what it does for us is it gives us, um, actually it gives us the a pasted value. Um, this is a formula, so the formula would change each time we recalculated. So this way everybody keeps their number they got in, in the lottery process. We delete out that formula piece and now everybody has their value, right? So at this point, I would come up here and I'm going to turn on our filters. And once I turn on the filters, what that allows me to do is to sort them from smallest to largest. So the lowest values are automatically, or not automatically, they are the top numbers. Um, so we would now put these in order from one to three. And then just to make it easier, I'll copy that down across here. And you'll see that we had, in this case, it would be as if we had 11 students who had applied. Um, and so whoever IK July 18th, 2005 is would be in the first position. So if we had one opening, that student would be in. If we had seven openings, then this many students would be in. The difficult part on the day of the lottery is that all that we can produce is a priority list. So we can tell you where you are in order from one through whatever the case may be. What we cannot do is say for sure 
that number one is in. Now, if it's at Newbridge and there's anticipated 80 openings, we usually say if you're in those top 50, you should feel pretty confident. But the closer you get to that cut point, the more the more we say, wait and see what, what the letter says. And we know that that's a little nerve wracking for all of us as parents. Um, being a parent myself, I know that to be true. Um, but um, we do try to keep the process and try to be clear that no one is accepted on the day of the lottery. The acceptance comes when you get the letter in the mail. So that is as fancy as the lottery process gets. If we were together at this point, we would print this out. Um, some folks would take them over. They'd hang them up again between the gym and the auditorium at Jacksonville High School. And those will remain there for this week. And as soon as we get the lists put together in a nice clean format, um, we then post those to our website. So let me take you over to our website real quick. Um, and this, whoops, sorry about that. And this is our academic innovation website and you can see there's a tab here for magnet schools right now that takes you to a page that talks about the timeline and those pieces and there's a link there that would have taken you to the application it doesn't anymore um, but once you're at the magnet schools page you will see uh, some links once they're loaded for our um, the result sheets for Clyde Irwin, for Northwoods Elementary, and for Newbridge Middle Magnet School. So that is the entire process. Um, just looking at my notes, making sure I didn't leave anything out for you. I think that's pretty much it. So again, my name is Michael Elder, and Pam Brewer and Michelle Chadwick are here as well uh, to help you through this process. And if we can help you in any way, just let us know.